Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so excited to be filming 15 cozy mystery series that I want to start this year. So some of these are new series, some of these are older series. These are just cozy mystery series that I have not personally read that I am really wanting to get to this year. I filmed one of these last year. I will link it above. I did not hit every book on that list, but I did hit a fair majority of them. So this is my intention for this year. So let's hop into the first series. So the first one is one that I've had so many of you recommend to me and it sounds right up my alley and it's called the Beacon Bake Shop Mystery Series. This is written by Darcy Hanna and it takes place in Beacon Harbor, Michigan. And our main character in this is Lindsay and she is engaged to a celebrity chef but she catches him in the arms of another woman and she decides to return home to Beacon and she basically decides to convert this lighthouse into a bakery. So it's the Beacon bake shop and of course she gets involved in a murder mystery and it sounds like she's the prime suspect in the first book so a pretty classic setup for a cozy mystery but the setting for this this especially sounds so good for summertime just with the beachy setting I'm really excited to get into this one especially in like spring and summer I feel like it'll be perfect oh so this next one is a brand new cozy mystery series it's coming out in February and it's by an author who I've enjoyed so far and that's Jennifer J Chow and this one is coming out in February it's called the magical fortune cookie series and the first book is Ill-Fated Fortune. It's coming out on February 20th. So our main character in this is Felicity Jin, and she grew up in Pixie, California, which I'm not sure if that's a real place, but I love the name of it. And she grew up around her mother who made these really magical, amazing pastries. I'm not sure. I don't think they're actually magical. I think it's just you know, they were just really special. And she's not so handy in the kitchen herself, but one day she's like packaging and takeout orders and she realizes that they're out of fortune cookies. So she starts to write the inscriptions for the fortune cookies herself. Well, one customer gets a kind of deadly inscription and they end up dead. And then the police are on Felicity's doorstep being like, hey, how'd you write this inscription? How did you know something bad was gonna happen to this person? That's kind of the premise. It sounds so good. I really am enjoying her LA Night Market mystery series. I've read book one, really loved it. I need to get book two still, but I've really enjoyed it. So I'm so looking forward to this series. So by Vicki Delaney is the Sherlock Holmes bookshop mystery series. I recently talked about book nine that's coming out in the series in January. And I'll, I'll link my new releases playlist above if you're curious, but the premise for this is so great. It takes place in London, the bookshop is mystery themed. There's lots of Sherlockian themes with this series. And basically our main character is Gemma Doyle. She's a transplanted English woman. She's returned to the quaint town of West London on Cape Cod to manage her great uncle Arthur's Sherlock Holmes bookshop and Emporium, which is of course located at 222 Baker Street. And it specializes in all these Holmes products. And also it's home to Moriarty the cat. Well, Gemma finds a rare and potentially valuable magazine, which has the first Sherlock Holmes story hidden in the bookshop. And she and her friend Jane, who runs the adjoining Miss Hudson's Tea Room, set off to find the owner, but they stumble on a dead body. Unfortunately, Gemma is the police's first suspect, so she starts to use her own powers of deduction to clear her name, including investigating a handsome rare books expert, the dead woman's suspiciously unmoved son, and a whole family of greedy characters who are desperate to cash in on the inheritance. That's the premise for the first book. I love the covers for the series. They're so cute, and I love Sherlock Holmes both movies and book renditions, so I'm really excited to read this one. The next one is the Tani Maria Mystery Series by Sally Andrews. This one takes place in Africa. I'm really trying to read cozy mysteries that are set in different places than what I typically read. So I recently read the Singaporean Mystery Series by Video U and I'm really enjoying it really want to continue this one, but this one takes place in Africa. And I guess Tani May, um, Tani means like aunt. That's kind of how they refer to anyone who's like an older woman at least older than the person referring to it. So it's kind of a term of endearment and she writes a food column for Gazette. She loves to cook and she also loves to offer advice and she's really good at giving advice and so people start to come to her for advice like help basically and one day a young woman comes to her asking for help because she's in an abusive relationship. Later on that young woman is found murdered and Tani Mae gets involved with it. So that's kind of the general premise for this. It sounds like it's a little bit more of a serious note than some cozies but I'm really excited to explore this series. The next one I've already bought and that is The Cat in the Stacks Mystery by Miranda James. The first one is Murder Past Due and I've heard so many good things about this from so many of you. I'm very excited to read this. It takes place in Athena, Mississippi, and our main character is actually Charlie, and he is a very good-natured librarian, and he has this cat, Diesel. And so, basically, there is a famous author of gory bestsellers and a former classmate of Charlie's, Godfrey Priest. He may be the pride of Athena, 
Mississippi, but Charlie remind, remembers him as an arrogant, manipulative jerk, and he's not the only one. So Godfrey's homecoming is not super great, and by lunch he's actually put a man in the hospital during a celebration. By dinner, Godfrey is dead. So now Charlie, with some help from Diesel, are going to paw their way through the town's grudges and find the killer before an impatient deputy throws the book at the wrong person. But Charlie continues to find out that all of his friends and co-workers had a score to settle with this nasty novelist. So there are so many aspects to this. I'm so excited for this. I love a good animal, like heavy, like themed, cozy, and cats are just darling. And this is a Maine Coon cat, which I think are especially cute and apparently giant cats, like giant. So I'm really excited for this. So thank you all that recommended this to me. This next one, I cannot believe I haven't read yet. <laughs> It's Dial A for Aunties by Jessie Q. Satanto. I've actually read Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. Loved it. I've read one of her thrillers. Loved it. But this is the one that I feel like really made her famous, like very popular on YouTube. And this one is supposed to be very comedic. So our main character is Medlin Chan and she basically goes on this blind date and it goes wrong. It goes really wrong. She accidentally kills her blind date. So she calls her mom and her aunties and they come out and help her dispose of the body. However, they find out that the body's accidentally delivered to a wedding and it's a wedding that the, their family business will actually be serving. And nothing is going to get in the way of her aunties buttercream flowers for the wedding. So they have to all kind of go undercover at this wedding to get the body out of there. And then on top of that, our main character ends up meeting with up with like a past like love or like crush of hers. So just all this drama it sounds like it's almost like kind of like a rom-com mystery. I'm very intrigued. I love Jesse Q. Satanto's writing style from the other two books I've read of hers. It's amazing. I just, oh, she's like a newfound favorite author of mine. So I'm so excited to dive into the series this year. Next one I'm so excited for is the Cambridge Bookshop Mystery Series by Elizabeth Penny. This one takes place in a small town in England and our main character Molly Kimball and her is a librarian and her mother Nina are deciding to move out to Cambridge, England to help run a family bookshop. They just need a change in life so they decide to move out there, make this big change. And they discover that the bookshop like store is not really doing well money-wise so Molly invites this poet to speak at the bookshop hoping to attract new customers. However, things go awry when a guest dies and one of her great aunt's like knitting needles is stuck in like their neck. So now one of her family members is under suspicion and she needs to clear it. I love the English setting. I love a good bookish cozy. This one just sounds like it has everything and more that I want to read about basically. This next one I'm really excited for. I think it's going to be a series but it is a brand new book. It's called Glory Be, a Glory Broussard mystery by Danielle Arcano. So this one takes place in Lafayette, Louisiana. Our main character is Glory and she is described as a woman of a certain age. Glory is one day sitting with a friend. She's enjoying lunch when she overhears that this nun in her community who she she and a lot of people really love has been found dead and people are thinking that she might have actually hurt herself. The, the police actually go along with that theory but Glory is positive that this could not be. So she starts to dig into the mystery with her reluctant daughter. So I'm thinking she might have an adult daughter based on how Glory herself is described. So I think that could be a really fun dynamic. I love a good mother-daughter sleuthing like duo or kind of butting heads even. It's just fun. And apparently there's like a lot of oil tycoons and just like a bunch of like maybe a voodoo priestess. Just a lot of fun aspects of Louisiana. I've never personally been but it just sounds like a really beautiful state. And I'm really excited to read this one. Plus the cover. The cover. How the artwork on the cover is so beautiful. I, when I saw this cover, my heart honestly stopped for a moment because I was just like, wow, beautiful. So our next one is by Holly Quinn. I've never actually heard of this mystery series before. Like, I, I don't think I've heard it recommended, but I love the theme for this. It's a handcrafted mystery. The first one is called A Crafter Knits a Clue, and this is by Holly Quinn. It came out in 2018 initially. There's three books out currently in the series. And our main character is Samantha, or Sammy, and she returns to her hometown of Hartsford. And she is going there for her best friend Kate's funeral. And unfortunately, she learns that Kate's beloved craft store is in danger of dying out with her with the owner. So despite all the expectations she had for her own life, Sammy decides to move back home with her golden retriever and she takes over Community Crafts, which is a few doors down Main Street. And there's also a new arrival in town, Ingrid Wilson, who's just opened the yarn barn nearby. And Sammy decides to take a stroll over there one day, see if she needs any help, see how she's doing. And she actually finds Ingrid's dead body, which is just obviously horrifying. The detective in the town is thrown for a loop as every single citizen of Hartsford has their own theory about Ingrid's murder and everyone in town seems to be a suspect. 
and Sammy decides to go ahead and help Detective Liam, who she seems to maybe have a little bit of a thing for, and when he arrests the really nice affable woodworker Miles Danbury, Sammy is like there's no way and she puts everything on the line to help clear Miles. So she is just unraveling all these clues, she's trying to take on this knitting business in honor of her best friend. There's so many things I love about this, the way it's set up, the golden retriever, and I just personally, I love crafty mysteries. I really would like to learn and like read more of those this year, so if you have any recommendations for a good crafty mystery, let me know. This next one is a Vish Puri mystery book. I recently picked up book one in the series at my library book sale. I'll link the video above if you want to check out the library book sale that it, like haul that I did with it. This is by Tara Quinn Hall and basically this is Vish Puri right here. He's India's private investigator and this sounds kind of like a golden age style mystery, very like kind of classic. And as a private investigator he's used to taking on lots of different cases whether that's you know snooping to see if someone is cheating on their spouse or in this case he's defending a public litigator who's a very honest man but he's being accused of something he didn't do, at least that the investigator doesn't think he did. So he's to help him clear his name. I love the artwork and how colorful this book is. That's what really caught my attention at the book sale and I am personally just so excited for this. This next one has a little bit of a spooky vibe. I don't think it's a truly supernatural cozy but it has like a touch of it and that's the Salem B&B Mysteries. This is by Tracy Wilton and this one involves our main character Charlene Morris. Our main character in this is a young widow named Charlene and she decides to kind of get a fresh start and she buys this old kind of broken down B&B deciding to like renovate it and open it up for business and her first night there she falls asleep and she wakes up in the middle of the night startled because there's this man at the edge of her bed which is obviously I mean it's horrifying terrifying like but the man is like a ghost and he introduces himself as Jack Strathmore and he says that he used to live in this house but he was pushed down the stairs and killed and it was never solved or maybe it was declared an accident something like that it was an unsolved case and so he begs her to take him on like and help him solve this and to be able to open for Halloween rush season she needs to get this sorted out. It sounds like she also starts to grow attached to him so it's kind of giving me Haunted Bookshop by Cleo Coyle vibes. We'll see. Let me know if you've read both of these if you find those to be similar in any way but I'm excited. I love, I, lo I want to read more bed and breakfast like in hotel cozies. I find that to be a really fun setting for mysteries. This next one is another bookish cozy and it's the first one in the series is called Death of a Red Hot Rancher and this is called A Love is Murder Mystery by Mimi Granger. There's two books out currently. Our main character is Lizzie Hale and she is the lucky owner of a successful romance bookshop called Love Under the Covers but she's pretty unlucky in love herself. So even though she's read all the famous romance novelists, she just can't seem to land a man despite all that. But she's got bigger problems to worry about, like murder. So when this man named Brody, who is a resident bachelor and ranch owner, is found stabbed to the chest, hearts are breaking all over Tinker's Creek. But when Lizzie's aunt is implicated in the murder, she's determined to clear her name. And Lizzie quickly realizes that Brody may have been attractive but he had a lot of hidden secrets and she's soon leafing through a stack of suspects longer than Brody's list of lovers. The killer's still on the loose and Lizzie will have to find the truth before this turns nasty. I love the cover for this. I like the concept. I don't know if this is like half romance, half cozy mystery, I'll see, but I'm really intrigued by the whole premise and the dog in the front is really cute. This next one, so I've really been enjoying um, Deborah Sandfelder's boutique mystery series and this one's called Swayed to Rest, a Material Witness Mystery by Diane Valor and there's currently four mysteries out in this series. Our main character in this has quite the name, it's Polyester Monroe and as a child she loved working in or like being around her like family's textile shop but there was a family tragedy that forced them to close it. Well now years later as an adult, her uncle has passed away and left her the shop and she's decided to renew it, reopen it, but shortly after opening it, a man connected to the family tragedy that caused them to close is found in the parking lot nearby and so she gets involved in the case. I'm really excited for this one. It's a small town cozy. You have like the cozy like kind of fashion, crafty elements of it, so kind of some things that I'm really trying to explore theme-wise and I thought this one just sounded really interesting. This next one was a recommendation from several of you when you heard that I was trying to read 
more like international cozies. This one's called The Number One Lady Detectives Agency and it's written by Alexander McCall Smith and it takes place in Botswana. So our main character in this is Precious and she really enjoys helping other people so she's opened up this detective agency in Botswana and she is helping people with all sorts of cases much like the private investigator, you know, marriage struggles, mysteries, all these sort of things but the things that really caught her attention is when an 11 year old boy goes missing and he's possibly being taken by witch doctors. So it sounds like a really interesting start to the series. I really want to check this one out. I think my library has it so I want to see if I can check it out from them and it just sounds like a really unique series and again a setting that I've never read a book in personally. This next, this last one I love the pun for. It's so cute. It's called The Deadly End Mystery Series by Victoria Walters. There's three books out currently and this is a granddaughter grandmother kind of duo which I love. So we have Nancy and Jane Hunter. They're both named after famous mystery like sluice nancy drew and jane marple which i love and basically they have they work in a small town and they have a bookshop that sells like thrillers and mystery novels so fantastic bookish setting and one day the this mansion is opened up nearby and it hasn't been opened for parties in a long time but there's an engagement party being thrown there and at the party this young beautiful woman who was recently married is found dead and Nancy and Jane decide to solve the mystery because who better than them with their knowledge of mysteries and mystery novels to solve the mystery and I just love the idea for this so much. I think the covers for this are super cute and there's just so many tropes I'm already like yes give it to me I love it. So anyways that is the end of this book compilation. I hope you enjoyed. I will link last year's video above if you want 15 other cozy mystery series to check out. I'll link it above and otherwise if you're a fan of cozy mysteries, murder mysteries, or thrillers, or all three of those, definitely hit subscribe because I talk about those on my channel every single week and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!